Hey everybody, it's Eric. So, I recently rebuilt my website using Gatsby, and I've been loving it so far. It makes it really easy to build websites, and the developer experience is really nice, so I highly recommend it. But one thing that got me worried about Gatsby is that it just feels a little slow sometimes. Now, don't get me wrong, the performance is really nice in Gatsby, because what it does is it optimizes the images for you, minifies your code for you, and a whole bunch of other stuff that makes it easy to keep it performant. But the initial page, the initial page load is a little bit slow. So let me reload this for the first time. And as you can see, it just took like one, two seconds to load in this image. And it just felt like really slow the first time I saw it. This is a very simple page with static content. It's just an image and text, so it should be a lot faster to load than this. The reason for that is Gatsby actually loads in a lot of JavaScript when you first run it. So, I gotta explain the idea behind Gatsby right here. So, what Gatsby does is it takes your static site and it basically turns it into a single page application. So, since it's a single page application now, you can click around to about, contact, and everything loads super quickly. So, Gatsby takes your website and hydrates it into a React app and that's how you get all the nice caching, you get all the nice pre-loading. Pre so whenever you load this in the background, what all these scripts are doing is it's loading all these other pages. So whenever you click on these, it's super quick. Now that's nice if you have like a bigger website, like the Gatsby JS website. So I'm on the docs, I'm gonna be poking around the docs a lot while I'm working with Gatsby. So all that, is, all that works pretty well and I'm going to be visiting this a lot, so caching this makes a lot of sense. But with this personal website, it's kind of just like a one-off thing. Like people are going to visit this once, maybe twice, and I don't know if loading in all this JavaScript on the very first time they come to the site is the best option. But I wanted to speed this up a little bit, and so I'm not going to take credit for all this. I found this article that I really liked by, uh, what's this guy's name? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce this, but this guy right here. And I'll leave a link to this in the description. So, what I do with my website is, so this is all built with React. So instead of using React, what I wanted to do instead was use Preact. And Preact is kind of like a Re React alternative. Right here it says it's a three kilobyte alternative to React to react with the same modern API. So instead of loading in like all like 30 kilobytes of react, what I can do instead is just add one line to my Gatsby config and just make it three kilobytes of react. So that's super simple to do with your Gatsby project. So what I did is go into my website and you can just yarn add Gatsby plugin preact and then the actual Preact framework. And after you do that, the only thing you have to do is add one line to your Gatsby config at the bottom. Just Gatsby plugin Preact. And then Preact will be your rendering engine instead of React. And so what that does is cut your time down by a lot. So let me compare with all of these. So this is the React website, powered by React, and this is taking about 117 kilobytes of JavaScript, whereas with the Preact, this is only loading in about 84 kilobytes of React, or Preact instead. So that's already a pretty big saving. and. You can see my Lighthouse score is a little bit better. So, <laughs> I might be nitpicking a little bit too much, but I got it up from a 98 to a 99. And got the max potential first input delay down by 30 milliseconds. And it just feels a little bit snappier. So, that's a pretty easy performance fix that you can do. And it literally only takes one line in your Gatsby config. So... For me, it was kind of a no-brainer. I was like, okay, that's an easy little win. But it still is a lot of JavaScript. 
So we're loading in all these scripts right here. It's still, well, including that Google Analytics, it's still about like 70 kilobytes of JavaScript. And yeah, just for a static little website like this, it does seem a little bit excessive. And so one thing you can also do is just completely remove the JavaScript from the website. So this is what it looks like without any JavaScript. And you can just click around and it looks like a normal website. It isn't running React, so it's not prefetching any content, it's not caching anything. So it's basically just a static website like you get with a normal static site generator. And the only JavaScript this is loading in is Google Analytics, which I can probably cut if I wanted to. But it just loads a lot faster. So whenever I load this in for the first time, it just snaps in like that. So I really like this. If I was to build this out into more of a blog or a website that people would return to more often, it might, be, it might make more sense to have React in there. But just this tiny little website, I kind of like not having JavaScript in there. Now, I've seen Kyle Matthews, kind of the creator of Gatsby.js. He was talking to some people about, uh, some people were talking on GitHub about, hey, can you add an option to remove the JavaScript? And Kyle Matthews was like, well, that kind of takes away the whole point of Gatsby. Like, the idea behind Gatsby is to make it into a React app and to preload everything and to cache everything. So if you take that out, like, why are you using Gatsby? I was kind of his reasoning. And I get that. But then again, if you use Gatsby without the JavaScript, you're still getting the great developer experience behind Gatsby. Still get to use GraphQL and all these little niceties that make developing with Gatsby a lot nicer than working with any other static site generator in my opinion. So I can definitely see it on both sides. Right now I still have my website using Preact, so you still get all the caching and preloading when you go there. Uh, I'm kind of torn between making it no JavaScript and keeping the Preact in there. So it's up to you if you want to go down that route. But if you do, what you want to do is Instead of adding this, you can add Gatsby plugin, no JavaScript. And then instead of this Gatsby plugin preact, you say Gatsby plugin, no JavaScript. And this has to be at the bottom of the Gatsby config, just so you know. And with that, you're still going to get the JavaScript in the development build. So for example, when you run Gatsby develop, you're still going to get the JavaScript. But in the build, you're going to get no JavaScript, like I showed you. So it's ultimately up to you what you want to do. Like I said, for bigger websites, I'd probably stick with the Preact version. And then with small little sites like this, it's kind of up to you if you want to remove the JavaScript or not. So that does speed up your site a lot. As you can see, let me reload this. So this is only 56 transferred, 56 kilobytes transferred, as opposed to 85. So it's a pretty big savings. And you can see the lighthouse audit. Everything's 100, which is pretty nice. It's just nice to have 100s with everything. This looks nice. But it's ultimately up to you if you want to have the JavaScript or not. I think I'm going to stick with this for now. It's a good little savings. And at the end of the day, it's not like a huge savings. Like if you have a website with a ton of scripts and a ton of images, like you're going to have a lot more performance increases by getting those down instead of like fiddling around with Preact and all this stuff. But for these kind of small portfolio websites, I think having a fast load time is pretty important as it just, it just makes a good first impression. So anyway, have at that if you want. And that's all I had to say.